Hello, this is The Slayer, and you're watching TVLine.com. Welcome back to another edition of Reality Check, your weekly deep dive into all things unscripted television. I'm Michael Slezak from TV Line. I'm here with season six American Idol standout Melinda Doolittle in the house with us again. Yay! For the second week running. I love being here. If I'm super cranky as we discuss the week in American Idol and The Voice, I blame you. You ruined what all singing for me because <laughs> I went to your show Tuesday night here in New York. It was insanity. I threw oh. a dirty napkin at the stage because I was wearing boots and I didn't think that would be appropriate. Oh, thank you. I, I really, I don't know that I've ever had more fun on stage. It was just amazing and I love having you in the audience so much. You're like the best <laughs> audience. When I see that hand go up, I'm like, yes! Melinda, we've got to discuss top 10 week on Idol. Let's talk about who we enjoyed. There were three, for me, stellar performances this week. I love you, puppy. I love you, love you, love you, puppy. Which I, I was very excited about. Gina. She owned it from the get-go, and even with walking through all the craziness that they had her walking through. The Why? staging was a mess. Why? This is not a club. You can never trust the intentions of the sway bots <laughs> in the audience. Those people just in the proximity of music, they try to kill it. You know what I love about her, though, is that she's so distinctive. Yeah. Like, it, something about her voice is so distinctive that no matter what song she does, it's like, you know this is Gina. <laughs> I feel like she is maybe more than any contestant this season attempting to win the show. She's given us her own written yes. song at the piano. She's rocked out to Paramore. She's decided to do a dance track for us. And I'm not saying that versatility and switching it up is the only way you can win it, but I feel like she's never complacent. It's always like, let me show you something a little bit different than what I did last week. And she actually tries to give us moments, which, I mean, we kind of been lacking this season. Just like Mariah Carey, I wrote moments, moments, <laughs> right here, moments, moments. And I wrote moments, moments next to my favorite performance of the week, which was Alex Preston, because yes. I loved it, but I don't know if he's given us a moment, moment. So help me navigate this. I feel like he gives us mm, slight moments. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. What I, <laughs> what I love about Alex is that he will change up the melody, but yeah. he gives, he keeps the integrity of the melody first. And then he adds these amazing things and he's got this, the highs in his voice when he just like pops up there and then it comes back down. Up like it a, is like a gorgeous. Yeah. Story of my life, take her home, drive all night. It's harder for an understated singer to give it us is. moments, moments but I feel like he's the most creative guy on the stage yes. or could be the most successful at being creative. So I need him to, to do that because as much as I was like, I really enjoy this performance, I really did. I don't want him to win by default. Oh, that could happen. I want to, he could, it could happen. Yeah. I want him to, if he's gonna win this season, I want him to fist on the table I want him to take the competition. I think he's doing his own version of Fist on the Table, though. I think, I think what we're asking <laughs> for from Alex is, is too much, because I think that he is understated in everything. And I think we have to accept that at this point. It's about acceptance. Then he, then he doesn't get to win. Oh. <laughs> well, Look, all right, I've, I've, dec I've decreed it. The story of my life. This competition is about challenging yourself. Leap off the edge. Speaking of leap off the edge, Malaya Watson. She's our third this yes. week, right? When a friend's talk about you, all it does is just tear me down. If you compare where she was when she did her first Bruno Mars song, Runaway Baby, to where she is now with When I Was Your Man, another Bruno Mars song, it's like hitting someone with a frying pan versus taking the frying pan and making them breakfast. It was controlled. Controlled. Which she hasn't been the most controlled contestant no. that they've had, but she controlled it and she, I mean, she held back, like she restrained herself. When she got to the ooh, ooh, oohs. Oh. <gasps> ooh, ooh. 
I almost feel like Malaya, if she can hold it together one more week, might actually be in, in front runner mode. If she isn't already, like, who is the, who's the front runner? I'm so confused this season. I feel like we don't even, I, th I feel like nobody's really taking that. Like, it's anybody's game every week. And we don't even have the production telling us, like, you should like Lauren, Elena, you know. <laughs> <laughs> which, they more, they're not directing it. Which, which thank I, you. I applaud. Thank I think you. that's great. But it's created a vacuum that no one has filled. I don't want to blame production on that. I want to no. blame contestants. Yeah. Do we have to give you disco week to shake you people into, <laughs> we're going to give you disco week. Listen, give them disco week then. Give them just 80s week. Chris Allen, she works hard for the money. She, Come on, Chris Allen. So Songs done better by Chris Allen. No, we already had that a couple weeks ago. <gasps> oh, oh, snap. Shoot. I don't think we should spend a lot of time on the bottom two this week. I think MK was the right person to go home. It breaks our heart, but we have to say goodbye to you. Yes. It, but, it, it, it was yes. like a sinkhole opened up in oh, the middle of the performance um, and everything mm, fell in. I, mm. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And Dexter, I think, deserved to last longer by virtue of the fact that at least he attempted to do something different with Cruz. You know when you see a burnt out car on the side of the road, the wheels are stripped off, the engine is gone? That's kind of what happened to Cruz. It was like left in that state. But he attempted. Well, I'm kind of with you last week on Dexter because I'm like, really, Cruz? I know. Really? It's not that I don't, that song is fun. It's great, whatever, but come on. A lot of controversy though this week, a lot of disagreement at the judges table right. on multiple contestants, and I wanna just briefly weigh in on all of them. I'm thinking about the words, which are extremely provocative lyrics, and I'm wondering, why were you smiling? Let's talk about the Jessica pumped up kick situation. Okay. I'm team J-Lo. It's a very easy point to make. It's not a pop But in this song specifically, there's something else going on. I am too. I actually disagree with Harry on this. And I, I know, I know, shocker. <laughs> All the other kids with the pumped up kicks, you better run, better run, faster than my bullet. First of all, I felt like Jess explained herself very well. It has such a misleading melody. It's very happy and you can move and bob your head to it and get into the groove. Which was really great to have. I that explanation, pre-performance explanation. Yeah. And then when you interpret the lyrics, you're like, oh, that's kind of creepy. But I feel like if Harry had ever heard this song before, right. he wouldn't have said anything. Because yeah. I'm like, you must just not know this song. Because that's the whole point of it. To me, just by stripping it down a bit, she made it even better. I want to know the intent of the artist. You've got to do it in a minute 30, so sometimes the intent can get lost along the way. She did a great job of explaining it. I did agree with Harry, though. Vocally, she has sat in one place for, right. for like three weeks. I would like her to maybe just look to Idol Past a little bit to see what a rock chick can do. Look at Haley's What Is and What Will Never Be. Look at Elise's whole lot of love. Look at your have a nice day. The problem is, is that this may just be what she does. Like we haven't been to her one woman show. And that's great if you want to keep doing the one woman show at the bar. If you want to win American Idol, you've got to do more. And I think a lot of these kids, you might have just hit it right on the head. I think a lot of these kids are relying on what was in their set list yes. for the last four years. Yes. You have to do more than that. You have to. You have to stretch yourself. You've been given a huge platform and all you've had in the past is a really small platform. So it, it requires you to step up your game. At the end of the day, that's just the bottom line. You, you come from this platform to this one, then step up your game. You got on this show because you wanted something different. That's what Jess said, that's what Sam said. I mean, they all want something different, so do something different. You do the same thing, you get the same results. So let's talk Majesty. She upped her game from Let It Go to Wake Me Up. Yes. But Wake Me Up was an apt title, something in her, she, I, did it break her to be in the bottom three? I think it did. Again, she says, huh? Oh. It's not fun to spin around over here, is it? No, it's not. She's so good, and I feel like she's 
scared to take chances now because America put her in the bottom three. Tonight I saw something in you that I've never seen, which was a little bit of fear. J-Lo really had like one of the most exquisite weeks she's ever had. I it mean, was the most exquisite she week. She was just yeah. on it. And in calling out the fear in majesty, like there was just this underlying tone that made me uncomfortable. But I I think Harry was right. She challenges people, and people like to be challenged. I think what she did with the arrangement was interesting yes. and cool. It's not even in the arrangement or the, the taking of risks. It's about, you know, palpable self-doubt yes. is not fun to watch. No, no, no. I feel like she could be, like, a front runner. Yeah. If Maybe even should be back. a front runner she if the be. if the majesty of tightrope begins to show up. If the majesty of tightrope, <laughs> kind of like the way that sounds. I like it too. <laughs> Sam, I think again a step forward from what he did with Come Together, yeah. but it's still not where it needs to be. Also, don't sing a song about a guy looking at his girlfriend who has a scar on her face from a physical altercation that they had. My seat's been taken by some sunglasses Asking about a scar And then they're in a bar. You're 17. I don't want it. I know I gave it to you months ago At the end of the day, if you can't connect with these lyrics, then what's the point? Then we can't connect with you. I don't even know that he knew that his song said that. Every one of these kids, when they pick a song, should take a pen, write out the lyrics. Read it. Don't sing it, read it. And then if you can see yourself saying that, then sing it. That's all. So, Amen. You hear me? You have to feel every word. Just as long as, you, as long as it's believable for you, then it's believable for Even us. Even if your song That's is, I love you, Poppy. Number one, baby, ain't no static. Got the hourglass for your baby, look at me. Somebody what? got water in their what? ear? What? 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 I love you, Poppy. I love you, love you, love you, Poppy. Shout out to Jessica, Pia, and Allison, though. Thank you. Gorgeous, gorgeous Thank harmonies. You. They didn't last long enough. It was on the wrong song, but I loved hearing it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I love you, Papi. I'm not even going to say song. I'm not going to insult songs like that. I love you, Papi. I love you, love you, love you, Papi. I think this was also a week where Caleb struggled a little bit with arrangement, but I'm going to give it to Caleb for at least taking chances. Yeah, he tried. He tried, and yeah. it's not always going to work out. And that's okay. And that's okay. His voice sounded great. The edge, the edge, the edge. All right, let me ask you a horrible question Kay. that you don't want to answer. Who is your top three right now? Gina, Alex, Caleb. I would say Caleb, Gina, that third spot. Really, if it, ugh, Jessica, Alex, Majesty are all in there. If she, she steps up, us, then I want to give it to Majesty. Based on her overall body you of said work. said today. Based on their overall body of work. Uh oh I still think Majesty might. Mm, I, I think probably Alex has the third spot, too. OK, there we are. We are done with Idol. Let's talk about The Voice real quick. Battle rounds began. I'm still a little underwhelmed by this season <sighs> I overall. I can't, can't. Really, it's all, it's all about Sassandra and Jill Scott for me. Like, that was. That was this week for me, and then we're done with the show. I mean, I don't think there's anything else <laughs> to say. I need Jill Scott to be on television every week. Make it really big and really desperate. You could save the world with this song. Sassandra would do what you want. I mean, that poor girl that was up against her, it was like putting oh. a lion and a lamb in the same Did, cage. What's you know, the lamb supposed to do? Bless her heart. She, she did a good job. I It just, that lion roared. Sandra was like, ah, and then it was over. She's a beast. She's a she beast master. Is a, she's a beast <laughs> master. <laughs> that might be my new sing heifer. Did you love anybody else this week? No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. Melinda, <laughs> Melinda didn't get I a lot of rest I this slept. week. <laughs>